Hey, it's good to be back. First of all, a show of hands. How many people have heard me speak before? Okay, that's neat. There's two-thirds of you haven't. Okay, you're in for some information you haven't heard before. And even you who have heard me before I have to give you the story on it. So, first of all, this is awakening to health. Do you know we've been going through a great awakening, supposedly, in the universe? So, I, this is part of it. This is part of the waking up from the misconceptions, lies, trickery, whatever, that we've had foisted on us for many years. Anyhow, welcome and congratulations about you, particularly caring about your health, because you're going to hear tonight things that you haven't heard before. I'm very confident of that. You're going to learn about the cause of all diseases, except for having something injected in your arm. And it all comes down to body chemistry. And I'll explain that as we go through. So I want to ask you a question. Do you have a vision for your health? Do you want it to look like 20 years from now? Do you have a vision of what that is? So most people don't. It's, it's I hope. I hope I'm as well as such and such. But you need to have something fixed in your mind, and that's what we're going to try to give you. So I'd like you to hold your questions until the end. And then we'll have a question and answer, and I'll try to answer uh, as best I can. So first of all, I want to say, uh, I have to give some disclaimers, that I'm not a doctor or a health practitioner, and I'm presenting information only. What you do with it is your decision. I'm not telling you to do something. I'm telling you my experiences and what I have learned. So it's not my intention either to criticize or denigrate doctors but only to tell you about the system that they work in and are regulated by. So moving on a little bit here. This is my favorite photo, I think, of all time. This is, for those of you, if you can see at the back, there's an elephant with a lion, lioness, walking beside, and the elephant in its trunk is carrying the little lion cub. Now the story on this was, in a time of a great drought in Africa, the elephant came upon this mama lion and the cub, and the cub was so exhausted, they were a long way from water. So the elephant and the lion, who are arch enemies, they don't like each other, but the elephant took compassion on this situation, picked up the little cub, and as you can see, was walking it to water. And Mama's just casually walking right beside it. Boy, is that ever a picture of what we should be. You know, selfless love and compassion. And caring, caring about others. So, a little bit about me, for those of you who haven't heard me or don't know about me before. I've written five books on natural health. Each one sort of built on the other one. The third one, which was published in 2006, revised in 2008 to 10, was called Conscious Health, and published by Namaste Publishing. That's the same publisher that did all Eckhart Tolle stuff. And anyhow, that won a Nautilus Award in the U.S. as the best healing and health book in 2006. So, but the, my reason for writing it wasn't just because I wanted to write a book and sell books. You really don't make much money selling books not unless you've got an organization behind you. But um, I wanted to share the information, what I'd learned with others, because I was encouraged on answers I was finding to my own health problems. So what were they? So I've always been a researcher and a searcher. I, I have the why questions. What's the cause of something? So as a child, I was only six months of, old, six months of age, and I have, my body was covered with eczema. Boy, little scratches and itches. And all through my teen years, I couldn't wear shorts. I had to wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, because the eczema was everywhere. It was just infuriating. Then I developed allergies, dogs, cats, horses, cows, and uh, age 25, asthma. So I got the lung problems. And then in my 40s, 50s, lots of bowel problems and lung infections 
that they had to use um, antibiotics for. And the eczema, by the way, the doctors, their solution was hydrocortisone creams. Slather it on. Well, what that does is push the symptom under again. And in later years, lots of indigestion, which I still have to have battle with. I haven't overcome every, everything. But I had done lots of research and uh, learning all I could and applying it. And two of the doctors in the last five years that I really paid attention to what they were saying was one was Dr. Robert Morse, who is a naturopath in Florida. And he's really big on fruits, berries, and melons. It's a fruitarian diet. He also has a whole, he's a master herbalist and so has a whole line of herbal supplements. So I followed his program for quite a time. I still had problems. What was going on? Then I started studying and listening to the videos of Dr. Robert O. Young. He lives in California. He's world renowned as a, as a, um, for the work he has done with high magnification microscopes on blood cell, live blood cell, actually studying all the fluids in the body. And he really unwound it. Oddly enough, and we do this, I had his book called The PH Miracle about 10 years ago. I hadn't read it carefully enough. And that's often our mistake. We tend to gloss over things and think, okay, we've got it, away you go. Anyhow, the last couple of years, I really went into that, listening to his videos. And so the main concepts of what I'm telling you to, about tonight is from these two gentlemen. So there's so much we can talk about, but I'm just going to try to hit the highlights and the main understandings that we have here. So just to put another little one up here, I thought getting older would take longer. Boy, it ain't that the truth. You know, here I am now, 85, coming out of retirement, and it's kind of exciting again. But you do grow older faster than you think. And if you're not well, it hurts. We suffer. And I've always said, you know, Huck, when my time's up, that's fine. I don't mind dying, but I really don't want to suffer. And if any of you have been around anyone who has had serious cancer and seen them in their last stages, the pain was excruciating. I, that, that's what my mother went through and died at the age of 61 from colon cancer. A terrible, terrible pain. I never forget her lying in hospital seeing the excruciating look on her face. Doctors at that time didn't want to give her morphine because she'd become addicted to it. Uh, anyhow. So, the truth is that we've been fooled and lied to by all parts of our society for generations, not just now, but going way back in the early 1900s, probably in the 1800s, but certainly in the 1900s. So, awakening, what is that? It's waking up to the truth about things. In 1910, John Rockefeller had the great idea of taking over the medical systems. So he commissioned a man by the name of Flexner to write a report. And so they visited all the medical institutions, training institutions, hospitals, etc., in the US and Canada, surveyed them, and then he wrote a report coming out with the recommendations that they should use these chemical drugs that they had started to import from Germany that had been created by the IG Farben Company, and that was the start of pharmaceuticals. And so what Rockefeller had done was given grants to these medical institutions to hire staff to do research, etc. But after the report came out, he said, okay, uh, if you're going to still want to get the grant assistance, you're going to have to use our recommendations for solutions to diseases. And so, gradually, 
the ones that were really true blue natural health had to drop off. And so they really took control. Not only was it North America, but it spread elsewhere as well. So my point here is not to demean doctors. Doctors have all gone in to their professions with the desire to help people. But unfortunately, the curriculum is entirely dominated and mandated, generated by the pharmaceutical industry, all gained towards, aimed towards a business, a repeat business. And so the prescriptions is it. So, and again, I'm not saying that all drugs are bad. My, drug, my life was saved twice by antibiotics from blood poisoning. The way I got the blood poisoning was from eczema sores that were open and they became infected. My immune system was down so far it couldn't fight it off. So there is a place, a time and a place, but it's, it's supposed to be a temporary thing. Now, if there's anything I want you to remember is this sign here. Disease is an inside job. And so is health, by the way. So, in the, in the uh, doctor's reference table, they have a, a book. It's called a PDR, Physician's Desk Reference. And when they're confused about certain symptoms, the patients come in, and they'll go back in or they'll study it in between visits to see if they can learn more about this so-called disease. Actually, there are, there's only one disease. Things they call disease are symptoms that happen in various areas of the body because of weakness in those areas. And the chemistry in the body is out of balance. So the physician's desk reference for almost every disease condition, they look up and says, cause unknown. Well, I asked the question way back in one of my back books, if you don't know the cause of something, how can you fix it? Well, but we've got this drug to make you feel better, and basically that's what happens. So, what we need to realize and appreciate is that each one of us has a wonderful body, so intelligent and so wise, it doesn't need our direction, because it does things innately, automatically. Your body does everything for a reason, depending on the circumstances you put it under. It does nothing by accident. You'll hear doctors or medical circles talk about um, autoimmune disease, meaning that the body has turned around and attacked itself. That, that's false. The body doesn't do that. The body does everything for a reason, and it's always trying to keep you alive and keep you well. It wants to keep you alive today so that you can see tomorrow. That's how wonderful your human body is. So when we were born, our physical strength as a baby was determined by the health of our mother and father at the time of conception, and their health, their strengths and weaknesses was determined also by their ancestors. So it sort of gets passed down, and what we end up with is genetic strengths or weaknesses in our body. It means that when we have certain health problems, they tend to happen in the weakest areas of our body. And the truth is that we are what we eat, what we drink, what we think, and what we breathe. What we think, because our attitudes and emotions also produce acidic or basic, that is, alkaline conditions in the body. So we have good habits and bad habits, a lot of them we're not even aware of. So the most important thing in our body is our blood, right? That good strained out, we're, we're dead. And the most health-giving property of the blood that it uses to fight invaders, if you like, is oxygen. So 
The two most important things then are oxygen and electrical energy. Because every one of our cells is like a little battery. And when it's fully charged, we feel great. Oddly enough, or not oddly enough, logically enough, both oxygen and the electrical energy we have in the body, as it becomes more alkaline, those go up. As our body becomes more acidic, our energy and the oxygen in the blood and cells goes down. When the oxygen goes down, disease, so-called disease conditions, can take over. So, this gets into acid and alkaline. There is a, such a thing as called the pH scale. pH stands for potential hydrogen, but it really is a scale that runs from 0 to 14, with 7 right smack in the middle. 7 is the neutral point. Going out here to 14 is alkaline. Going from 7 down to 0 is acid. But the real powerful part about the pH scale is that for every one point on the scale that you move, it multiplies by a strength of 10. So a pH 6 is 10 times more acidic than 7. 5 is 100. 4 is 1,000. 3 is 10,000. This will come clear as I start explaining the effect of certain foods. So the pH scale you need to have an appreciation of and an understanding of. So the, how the body was designed, our bodies were designed to work slightly at an alkaline level. So the body is alkaline by design. It's just like your, your motor vehicle, your car. If you give it clean gasoline, and its air cleaner is fine, um, carburation system is fine, it's ticking along. Once it starts to become sludged up, it starts to miss in the cylinders, and it starts to have problems. So, and that's because it's giving off wastes that are getting plugged up somewhere. Same thing happens in your body. We need to be taking in alkaline foods, but as Every blood cell in our body is a little battery. It takes in nutrition from fresh blood and it generates energy in the mitochondria of cells. And as it does its job of generating energy and all the other conversions that go on inside that I have no idea the extensiveness of it, but it's massive, it gives out waste. It gets rid of waste. And these wastes go into the lymphatic system to be taken out of the body. So our body is alkaline by design, but acidic by function. Just the act of living produces acids, which our body is meant to get rid of. Okay, how does this start effect relating to us? This is the pH of our typical bot diet. You see the part in yellow over there? That's where most of our foods are. They, progen they produce acids in these areas, our foods and liquids. The healthy area of the body here is in the first strength of 10 on the alkaline side. This little line here is your blood pH, which must be at a pH of 7.365. And your body will do everything it can, because it has to, to keep it close to that level. If that, we become so acidic that the body pH drops down to 7.1, you're in a coma. You go lower than that, and you're sayonara, baby. You're out of here. So the body does everything it can, because it has to, to keep you alive and healthy, to keep the blood pH. And it has mechanisms to try to do that, which I'll explain in a few minutes here. So, uh, Dr. Morse that I mentioned had a wonderful ex way of explaining health. He says, health is simple to understand. Disease is made to be confusing and complex by the system that we are serviced under. 
Health is simple to understand. He said, there's only two sides to chemistry, acid and alkaline. And there's only two fluids, two main fluids in the body, and that's blood and lymph. Have you ever seen or seen a picture of blood that's put in a test tube when you take a blood sample and they run it through a centrifuge? The blood being very slightly heavier than the lymph goes to the bottom, so you get this thick red fluid in the bottom of the test tube and you get a yellowish fluid on the top. That yellowish fluid is the lymph. Now that's the, that's the uh, liquid that transports wastes from our cells to be taken to the kidney, kidneys, filtered out, and expelled from the body in our urine. So, again, it's simple. Two sides to chemistry. Which one's causing the problem? Well, it's not alkaline. It's acid. And there's two fluids, blood and lymph. So, how is food transformed in our body? We take food in, do you think it's vitamins and minerals, all that stuff that makes its way out to the cells to feed them? No, not really. So we take food into our mouth, and we are meant to chew that until it's a liquid. Because as in that chewing and becoming a liquid, sodium bicarbonate, which you might know as baking soda, sodium bicarbonate is mixed with the food. The food sent down to the stomach, where more sodium bicarbonate is added, and then sent on to the small intestine, where, if necessary, more sodium bicarbonate is added by the pancreas gland, if needed. Because we start up here at a pH maybe around 7, neutral. Then it gets into the stomach. By the time it goes down and gets into the little villi, that is the little uh, channels in the small intestine, it needs to be brought to an alkaline level of 8.4. And as that happens, first of all, let me back up and explain, in the stomach, you say, but we've been taught that hydrochloric acid digests the food. No, what happens is the stomach is an organ of contribution, not an organ of digestion. It contributes sodium bicarbonate. Where does that come from? Well, the cells in the stomach create that by combining salt, which is sodium chloride, water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Put those together and you get two compounds, sodium bicarbonate and hydrochloric acid. The sodium bicarbonate is what's needed. The hydrochloric acid is what is a waste product and it needs to be gotten rid of. And I'll explain just a little more about that as we get down into the stomach again. So, the small intestine at the pH level of 8.4 produces, down in the pits of the, of the small intestine, stem cells and blood cells. And it produces new blood at the rate of 5, 000, 5 million per second. 5 million blood cells per second. So the whole purpose of this so-called digestion is to replenish our blood supply, because that's the life of the body. So in order to make good blood, we need to be paying attention to our diet. So remember this acronym, COWS. We need to be eating COWS. Stands for chlorophyll, oil, that's good oils, not, not the bad plant oils if you like, water and salt. Chlorophyll, oil, water and salt. That's what we need to make healthy blood. If we're not having that in our diet regularly, we are gradually getting weak, weaker immune systems. So moving on to talk a little more specifically about acids. We basically have two sources of acid production in our bodies. One of them is from the digestive acids. We take 
nutrition in in the form of food, and as that's processed through the stomach, through the intestines, and the waste is sent into the small intestine, from the small intestine then to the large intestine, and we defecate. We get rid of that in the toilet. Okay, so what happens to the hydrochloric acid? Really good question. Here's a picture of the stomach. What I want you to notice about this, don't examine it for detail, I just want you to look at the shape of it. We might logically think that at the bottom of our stomach it goes down into the small intestine. Uh Uh-uh. Look at it. It's up on the side. For a very simple reason is that the acids, the hydrochloric acid, falls to the bottom of the stomach where it then can be diffused out into various areas of our body via what's called the interstitial system. Or another word for it is the fascia. That's the very fine layer of tissue that surrounds all our organs, glands, and it actually is immediately under the skin a couple of these fluid layers before you get to the muscle. This was only realized by the medical authorities in the last few years that that system was there, but they still don't appreciate the function of it. And the function is that as these acids are moved out from the bottom of the uh, from the bottom of the stomach out into the fascia these fine tissues that run all through our body, completely through our body, to be eliminated out through our breath, respiration, sweat, perspiration, urination, and defecation. And in the case of ladies, women, real advantage on men for the time you were having your periods. Because the body in its wisdom said, ah, here's this fluid leaving the body, we don't need it anymore, let's dump these extra poisons in there, and out it goes. And that's the reason why statistically women live longer, a few years longer than men. But by the time you hit menopause, sorry, you're on the same level playing field that we're on. And we're back into those four mains, four main areas of respiration, perspiration, urination, and defecation. So we need to pay attention to these. So the second source we have is from cellular acids. I mentioned that every, every cell in our body takes in nutrition and eliminates wastes. So, uh, is that, yes. So the cellular wastes, each cell dumps into the lymphatic system. That's the system that takes it to the kidneys, where it has to be filtered because the good fluid is still sent back and reused in the body, but the wastes are eliminated, sent down these channels into the bladder and out through urination. These little sweethearts here are kidneys. They're only about four inches that big. Each one of them has little filters in there called nephrons. And we have about a million of them in each one. So you can imagine how fine those are. Now in time, because unknowing as we are with our diets, We overload the system. We produce too many wastes. The body can't get rid of them enough. They start to plug up. Just like the radiator in your car. If it's not kept clean, it'll overheat. And we've all seen cars at halfway up a mountain with the steam coming out. That's the same as our body. It'll plug up. When that happens, it starts to back up in the body. Now, something else I want you to notice here. See these little yellow dots on top of the kidneys? Those are your adrenal glands. 
Now your adrenal glands, the function of them is to regulate the speed of the body's metabolism, how fast it goes. If, if we are all of a sudden frightened by something, we can have unreal energy and strength even because the body produces adrenaline which speeds us up. By the way, that's what happens when you drink coffee. Caffeine stimulates the adrenal glands to put out adrenaline. Say, oh, it gives me energy? No, you just whip the horse really hard to make it go faster. The more you do that, the longer you do that, the more tired it gets, the less efficient they become because the adrenal glands give direction to the kidneys also. They work as a pair. So if the kidneys are congested, first of all, we'll start to get skin problems. What did I tell you about my health when I was a baby? Do you remember? I had eczema covering my whole body. Lasted on and off most of my life. I still have the odd small patch. What's that? My kidney reserves were so plugged up because my mother's were. She had eczema at the time uh, I was conceived and the time I, I was growing in her womb. So. All the time I was growing for the nine months in her womb, I'm using her bloodstream for my nutrition. And it was toxic. So where, what else, how can the body get rid of this? The first thing it does is try to send it out through the skin. So you have eczema, psoriasis, uh, boils, acne, that sort of stuff. So the skin is also referred to as the body's third kidney. So it's a sort of a, an emergency stopgap measure the body uses. So if there is too much, the skin hand can't handle it, or maybe the skin, maybe there's other areas of the body are weaker, then the waste that is supposed to go through here and out through the urination back up into the body right from the feet, right through into the head. And we get disease conditions that happen in the weakest genetic areas of the body. Dr. Young makes this statement, all diseases except by injection, and we could discuss in more detail about that, but that's not the purpose here today, are caused by acidosis. Too many acids in the body that the body is unable to expel, to get rid of. Remember that sign I showed you before? Disease as, what kind of a job? Disease is an inside job. Always happens. Things are not working properly because we're not keeping the channels of elimination open to allow the body to, to go about its task efficiently. We often hear people say, oh, you know, I, I've got uh, certain conditions, like I've got rhinitis, I've got tonsillitis, I have bronchitis, I have gastritis, I have prostatitis, I have vaginitis, I have phlebitis. All these things that ITS, I-T-I-S on the, back, on the end. Itis means inflammation. Another word for inflammation is acidosis. It's all simple. It comes right back. But you see, it's confusing. We think about those as different disease conditions. They're not. They're different symptoms that the body is putting out, talking to you, telling you what's wrong, asking for help, but we don't understand what it's saying. In my book, Conscious Self, I wrote a whole chapter in there called Your Body Talks to You. And <clears throat> that's the truth. We have to learn to interpret its signals and work with it. Because we are the body's helper, helper, not its boss. Its boss, in the end, it'll really try hard. It's just like you're helping a master mechanic work on a complicated engine and he's down on his back, he's under there, he's working with things and he wants you to pass him tools. He needs you to pass him tools. 
If you pass him the right ones, he's going to do the job. If you hand him a screwdriver when he really wants a 5 eighths wrench, is that going to work? No. Okay, it's the same with your body. Your body's counting on you to give it the tools it needs to become efficient and keep being efficient to do its job. So the body has natural detoxification methods. You never, ever catch a flu or get the flu. Your body brings it on because the waste conditions in your body have built up to a level where your body says, if we don't get rid of some of this stuff now, we're going to be in deep caca. Literally, in more ways than one. So, it will generate a flu, a, part, a cold. So when you have a cold, what happens? You start running from the nose, sometimes it gets into the lungs, you start to leak a lot of fluids, and you spit up stuff. And it's sort of mucus, isn't it? It's mucusy. So what is mucus? It's an oil-based liquid that surrounds the acids, because acids burn. They're corrosive. It surrounds them so that you can get them out of your body. See, the body's so smart. And the flu is basically the same thing. And, but you feel rotten during the time you're having this. You don't have much energy. But the fact is your body has the same energy during that time that it had before you the onset of the cold. It just, instead of directing it outwards into your muscles so you can use, and get around, feel great, it puts it inward into detoxifying your organs and glands. So it takes over the control of the energy that you're going to feel. Um, Excess acids. Again, when at the time we're born, assuming we're in, in reasonable health, your body is in pretty good physical condition. It has strong tissues, bones, etc. That means that it has lots of alkaline minerals. Calcium, magnesium, uh, sodium, potassium. These are in the tissues and bones of our body. And these are called your alkaline storage bank. Think of it as a bank. Now, what happens when we keep eating acidic foods that cause, remember that diagram, cause um, acid levels in the body to be down at 100, 1,000 times more acidic than neutral, that is a heavy weight on the blood pH. So the body, in its wisdom, says we've got to neutralize these somehow, so we will rob some alkaline minerals from, your, from the tissues, the bones, etc. You see people that are hunched over like this, osteoporosis, you've seen them like that. What is that? That's the spine becomes bent over because calcium has been taken out of it. Bones that become flim become weak, calcium being taken out of them. Um, tissues in the body. Hernia is caused by, caused by the same thing. A thinning of the tissues that were strong, but will take a little out of here, a little out of there, so it makes the body weaker, but it doesn't tear a big hole in it unless we, we cause that. So that's what the body does to keep your blood at the healthy level. So the same thing happens with our nerves. I, should, I want to explain that. Our nerves are like the electrical system in our house. All, all the wires that go through the house, they're covered by... A, an insulation layer. So are our nerves. That's called a myelin sheath. 
When the acids are in too much of a concentration, even in the brain, then that myelin sheath gets broken down, and just like the electrical system in your house where it becomes less efficient and even sparks off can start problems, same thing happens in the head. So we get our dementias, the Alzheimer's, because those myelin sheaths have been worn right down and the efficiency of the nerve transmission in the brain is, gets worse. Fat. We get fat, we'd like to get rid of it. We go on a diet, we get rid of it, but it comes back. What's going on? The fat, again, remember, your body doesn't do anything by accident. Always on a purpose. So what's the purpose of fat? It's to protect you from the acids that it couldn't get rid of. So it stores them in the fatty layers until it's safe enough to expel them out, to get rid of the fat and expel them out of the body. So the fat is, is uh, forming a purpose. All pain in the body is caused by acidosis, except if you're hit with a hammer or you fall down and hurt yourself. All pain that you feel within your body is caused by acids because they burn, they corrode. But other diseases, diabetes, heart disease, lupus, Lyme's, MS, those, and Parkinson's, those are nerve deterioration uh, diseases, dementia, cancer. Let's talk about cancer for just for a moment. When Dr. Otto Warburg in the 1930s discovered that cancer cannot live in the presence of oxygen. So when the pH of certain tissues depending on genetic weaknesses or injuries or whatever, gets down to the level of 5.5 pH. Now, from 7 to 6 is 10, 7 to 5 is 100. So that's only 50 times more acidic than neutral. When the, blood, when the tissue pH gets down to a level of 5.5 or less, what happens is the oxygen levels are low. And so the cells in that area still want to continue on, so they convert from using oxygen for their fuel, main fuel, to becoming like plant cells, and they start using carbon dioxide. That's why cancer cells and tumors start to grow. They are actually growing in a, an oxygen-poor environment. So understand and realize the importance of your blood pH and the whole pH. I'm going to get into that a little more. How to reverse the damage, transitioning. It first, it begins in your brain and reprogramming your vision for your health. So how to reverse the damage that may have already been done and get to a level of health that you may not have felt for a while or you want to keep feeling the good level of health, especially you, you gym rats here. So it always comes down to alkalization, that's through your diet, and detoxification. So uh, how can we monitor this? Well, we check our, the pH of our saliva and our urine with pH strips that you can buy from the health food store or from um, Choices has them. Little pH strips like this. First thing in the morning, when you get up, you don't drink any, you don't brush your teeth, you don't, uh, brush, you don't do anything to affect it. You urinate and put one of these strips in, in the urine stream and look at it. And there will be a little chart that will tell you what pH level your urine is at. And then you take another one, fresh one, you swallow two or three times, get the stale saliva out of your mouth, spit on that, and look at it, same thing. Your urine pH, then, is going to tell you it's being influenced by the last 24 hours of what you ate and drank, but it's going to tell you the pH of your lymph system. Remember, the lymph goes through the kidneys and out through the urine. So it tells you the pH level, how acidic or alkaline your urine is. It should be about 7. Same thing with your saliva pH. 
but the saliva pH tells you the strength of your alkaline storage bank, your alkaline reserve. Again, that should be at about 7. When I finally got the message here and really understood this in the last year, at about 6-7 months ago, the pH of my urine was down in the fives. Scared me, should too. And I had been sort of trying to eat well, but I hadn't been really repairing the damage that had been done from years before. My saliva pH was at 6.4, 6.5. Again, that's depleted. So I'm going to tell you how you can bring that up a little more. So Andrew, as we transition, uh, as we transition over from not knowing what a good diet is into a better one, if we have a serious illness, we have no time to lose. We need to go 100% raw, fruits and vegetables, non-sweet fruits, 100% raw because that's the only source your body has of replenishing its electrical energy. You, there's no energy in cooked food. It's been taken out by the heat. And you can hyperalkalize, which means really speed up this process, and you do that with baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, non-aluminum, and you can buy Bob's Red Mill baking soda from Savon, other places, but if you're going to, whenever you buy it, make sure it doesn't have aluminum because that's a metal that gets into the brain and causes all sorts of other problems. So, we have to stop the wrong foods and drinks, and we start doing the right ones. So what are the worst foods? Proteins. Oh, don't we need protein, especially us muscle builders here? Well, the fact is, all meats have protein levels of between 15 and 30 percent. Our body is only 7 percent protein. It's come a little difference here, isn't there? Mother's milk. Time in our life when we grew the fastest and we fed off, we were fed from our mother's milk. That's only one and a half percent or a little more percent protein. Really low. And yet we doubled our weight or tripled it in the first one or two years. Grew like mad. So the whole protein thing is a myth. And it's a trap. Dairy is the next one. The proteins are too high, and it also has lactose in it, which, as it's broken down in the system, call it digested if you like, whatever, it produces lactic acid, which is a pH level of 3.5, which is 5,000 times more acidic than neutral. Drinks, alcohol, soft drinks, all these things, they're in the pH level. Oh, by the way, milk is included in the dairy, all those. Um, the drinks that are no good for us have pH levels in the area of 2 to 5. Beer and wine are usually hover around 4. That's a thousand times more acidic than neutral. Sugars. And that was really my downfall and what I had been missing all the years I was detoxifying and trying to get better because ever since a child I just loved sweets. I used to eat honey, all just spoonfuls of it. So what happens? All sugars, when processed in the body, feed fermentation. Okay, think fermentation. Anybody made beer or wine before? You make it, it ferments and turns into alcohol. Alcohol with a pH level of somewhere around 4. So this is what all sugars do. They feed bacteria, if you like, which are formed from defective cells to become yeast, then fungus, and then mold. So the sugars feed these yeasts and molds in our body. They are the things that cause itch and... Um, gradually convert into the alcohol 
which again is a strong acid. So when we crave things, what is that craving? What is it? It's not us craving it. It's the yeasts inside us calling for their food because they want to keep living. And the only way to get rid of them is you starve them. And then when they're gone, you're not bothered by this craving anymore. The best foods are alkaline ones. And I'll just mention the top ones. Grapefruits, lemons and limes, and also cucumber and tomatoes. Did you know cucumber and tomato are also fruits? Because they have seeds inside them. That's the definition. But those are alkaline, really great. Probably the king, queen of vegetable, fruits and vegetables is the avocado. Because avocado has, is green, lots of chlorophyll, and lots of oils. The first two ingredients for making good. Can you remember? Cows. And what was that? To make good? Blood. Blood. So that's why avocado is so good. Celery add to that, and greens. So lots of greens. As Dr. Uh, Young says, stay green, not mean. Because actually, people who have, are over acid can have acidic personalities. They are difficult to get along with. They're critical. Um, take offense easily, perhaps. The opposite of that, the alkaline personality, is a person who's easier going, love, peace, forgiveness, those emotions. Baking soda to hyperalkalize. How, how to do that? Um, I have, for a long time now, you take the juice of a half a lemon, and your lemons should be soft, by the way, a little on the soft side, not hard. They're really hard. Those are very acidic. They need to ripen. You leave them out in the counter long enough, they'll soften, they'll ripen. And the juice of half a lemon, glass of water, put in a half a teaspoon to a teaspoonful of baking soda in that. You really increase the alkaline making power of that drink. First thing in the morning. I have that every day, first thing in the morning. It's a great flush of the whole alimentary tract, the digestive system, right the way through. But it all... I'll, I'll give you a, one of the handouts, you'll have it on there. A half to one. You can do that three or four times a day, especially if you find out through your pH testing that you are lower than you would like to be. And once you start alkalizing or hyperalkalizing, then your urine show, should show a pH between 7.2 and 8.4. Typically, mine shows about an 8.0 now, on average. And that's great, because see, that means that the acids coming out into the lymphatic system are no longer burning those tissues. They're, they're uh, maintaining that alkaline level. And while the body is trying to replenish its alkaline reserves into the tissues and bones. So, uh, this is a chart that I devised myself. I made this up. And that is, on the left side of the chart, of course, you have the acids. That's the area of dis-ease. Notice I didn't say disease. Dis-ease. It means the body is at an ill. It's, it, it's not comfortable. It's dis-eased. It's in a state of dis-ease. And the area on the right is alkaline area, and that's health because that's where your blood pH is. Now, as you move further to the left, cell voltage gets less. Electricity. Your oxygen gets less. The cellular energy is less. The mitochondria are able to put out less. And you feel less energy. Perhaps need, oh God, I've got to have a nap in the afternoon. Can't get through the day. Or I used to be able to go all day like a, you know, like a dynamo. I can't do that anymore. What's happening? If it's because of the acid alkaline, it's because the energy is less, the more acidic you get. As you move to the right, then this all increases. And so in summary form, there's your foods and your liquids. At the bottom, it tells you how to 
check uh, about checking your pH and what it should be if you are not alkalizing and if you are alkalizing. So that is also there in the handout that I'm going to give you. So as a general rule, if you're fairly healthy, stick to the 80-20 rule. 80% of the things correct or alkaline, if you like, 20% can be on the acidic side to keep yourself balanced. Unless you have a serious illness when you have to pull out all the stops. Detoxing. Everyone, even if they haven't done it before, should detox the colon on a regular basis. Gray and we need to have excellent product in here called Herb Cocktail by Avena. And it's an, it's a, uh, an herbal product that gradually cleanses the colon and takes the mucoid plaque, as it's called. So when we, when we have uh, too much acid in our system for too long, remember I said it wants to, to encapsulate them with, with uh, a mucus, which is basically a, a lipid substance. Well, that also starts to coat the, the walls of the colon. And in time, that will turn into a hard sort of a rubber-like material called mucoid plaque. When I first started to do this and did colonic irrigations, many of them, and used the herb cocktail over time, after a while, you could see in the toilet, from bowel movements, you'd see this little, little black strips, little flat strips. That was the mucoid plaque coming off. By the way, don't be squeamish about noticing what's in your movements because there's a lot of information there. Is it soft? Is it hard? Is there undigested stuff in there? What color is it? That sort of thing. There's a lot of signs of health or a little off balance health. Above all, see that your kidneys are filtering. Um, make sure that your kidneys are filtering. And the way you do that is you urinate in a jar like a mason jar or a clear honey jar. So you do your night's urine over that, leave it on the counter. And in the morning, take that, shake it a little, hold it up to the light. You should see little particles in there, little dust particles, or it should look cloudy. That means that your kidneys are filtering. They're doing fine. If day after day, week after week, that's as clear as a glass of pale ale, Something's wrong. The kidneys are getting congested in what Dr. Morse calls lymphatic constipation. So the kidneys become constipated. As that happens, the, the acids spread out through the body. The kidneys must be open and filtering. And there are ways to get that moving if they're not moving to your satisfaction. Fasting is one, one way you can use compresses on the back, hot and cold, that sort of thing. But the most effective one is something called dry fasting, which I have done many of now, because at one point I had uh, swelling of my ankles and feet. Classic kidneys plugged up. So dry fasting is when, for a period of time, you eat nothing and you drink nothing. We all dry fast overnight while you're asleep but you take and extend that time. So if you want to try that, ease into it. First day, go till noon without eating or drinking. So from the night time to the next noon. Then you can move it out a little further. Notice how you're feeling though. Don't push the body past points of discomfort. I'm not talking about hunger. I'm talking about discomfort. I have done many 40-hour dry fasts. So I go from Supper time, one day, right through the next day, right through the next morning to the 40-hour mark. The advantage of dry fasting is that one day of dry fasting is equivalent to three days of water fasting. Dr. Filonov in Russia is a real authority in this. He's conducted dry fasts with people up to 13 days, if you imagine. Many, many at seven days. And there are a lot of people who have done dry fasts for three and four days. I have not. The longest I've done it is 42 hours. 
mostly because I'm a skinny little guy. When I do that, I really start to lose the weight. However, after a period of time, and it took me a month, more than a month of doing dry fast when I told you about my swelling ankles, before I started to get sediment in my urine again. But it did. I reversed it, and that kept going. And every time I do one now, in the morning, there's so much uh, sediment in there. It's, it's really amazing. It's very encouraging. So, when you know what your body is, is doing, how it's behaving, it becomes exciting. The one last thing I really want to tell you about is um, blood pressure. Blood pressure does more, tells you more than, oh, you've got a problem with your heart, your circulation. Well, yes, you may have, but that's really an indirect thing because the primary problem is your kidneys. So this is why you really have to appreciate your kidneys and adrenals. Remember, your adrenals sit on top of your kidneys. They give direction to it, to the kidneys. So the top number, when you take your blood pressure, you get a systolic, the top number, and a diastolic, the bottom number. And they learned this from Dr. Morse. The top number gives you the strength of your adrenal glands. And the bottom number gives you the efficiency of your kidneys, how easily they are eliminating waste. We are told that normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. That's a medical assessment of it. A healthy blood pressure is 120 to 125 over 60, over 60 to 70. After a long time now, my, this morning I took, and you do it both sides, because you're different on both sides of your body, because you have organs and glands on each side of the body. So this morning, my left side was 114 over uh, 68. The right side was 118 over 71 or 72. I'm coming. There was a time when that was right in the tank, like I have had blood pressure below 100 over oh, down to 60. So if I would suggest you make sure you get pH strips, and regularly monitor your urine and saliva, first thing in the morning. Get a, a blood pressure monitor. They're, you can get it for, I think, under $100 at Costco. And learn how to use that at various times and check your blood pressure. And notice what you're looking for is the strength of your adrenals and the efficiency of your kidneys. So all you need to remember now, to summarize this, is there only two sides to chemistry, acid and alkaline. Which one causes the problem? Only two fluids in a cell, blood and lymph. Which one can be a problem? Which, where do the acids go? Into the lymph. Okay, two sides to chemistry, acid and alkaline, two fluids in the body, blood and lymph, we need to make healthy blood, cows, and we need to be able to get rid of the limp, lymph through the kidneys. Your remedy is always alkalization and detoxification. So you need to make sure your, your bowels are working properly. You can even take kidney flushes with herb, herbal kidneys. And, the, um, and your skin, do that with saunas with sweating. You people that are working out, do you realize that the lactic acid you produce in a workout is producing acids at a pH of 4? You need to be working to move that through the system with your diet, and this is why it's really good to do saunas. Hot tubs, okay, as long as it doesn't have chlorine in it. It needs to have the hydrogen peroxide in them. And the fourth thing, make sure your kidneys are filtering, cloudy or showing some sediment. So as final tools that you should have, I would strongly suggest, because I've done this for years, get a little notebook, a little fresh notebook, 
and keep it. Keep a record of your own health, how you're feeling. Write down any problems, annoyances you think you have in your body right now as you start. Because one month, two years, two, two months down the road, you won't remember that you even had those. And it's nice to look back on them. So you'll keep record periodically of the pH of your saliva and your urine and your blood pressures. And if you're going to do any fasting, you'll have these before and after. So you become your own technician, if you're like, your own doctor, because you are. You're in charge of your own health. It's your body. Need pH strips and a blood pressure monitor? I strongly suggest that you buy the book pH Miracle and study it, read it, the whole thing. You can buy it as a, uh, as a paperback or as a, a digital copy, which I did, and I have it on my iPad. And another interesting site you can go to, and you can write this down, it's called rawfigs.com. Rawfigs.com. That's Dr. Morse's site. And you can type, put in any word in there. You can say, put in diabetes. And when you do a couple of clicks, because it'll have all the times that he's answered questions from patients who have written in saying, what about this problem, that problem? Just about anything you can think of where he is teaching people what they are and what you should be doing about it. And it all comes down to kidneys and adrenals. He says that time and time and time again. But it's really interesting to type something in there and hear what he says on that. And there'll be several times when he talks about it, so you can click down the list. So, rawfigs.com. And the other thing is learn how to make alkaline smoothies. Okay, I think that's it for my bit. If you have questions, I'll really try to answer them. Thank you. You've been a very attentive audience. I can tell by the, your faces. <laughs>